Alright guys, welcome to another episode of Metro Asia Pacific. I am Alvin Sanga, and we're here at the Chamorro Village. We are at a blacksmith workshop, and here today we have James. Thank you for being on the show, James. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. As a mentor recommendation from CJ. Tell me one thing that most people might not know about. Um, I guess one thing off the bat that most people don't know about me, um, especially just by looking at me, um, is that I'm actually half Korean. Half Korean? What's, what's, what's the other half? Uh, the other half is true. German, Korean, and um, I guess I just have to ask that. How did you, how did your family end up? Uh, well, my mom moved here from Korea um, because of a business opportunity that her dad had back in the man, I want to say like seventies. Um, and then my my dad moved here because he was in the navy and he got stationed here. So that's gonna lead right into the, the next thing. Is, so your parents are here. They made you. Now what's your story? And then how do we get here today? And uh, my story's a little bit all over the place. Um, I've jumped around, um, went to high school here on Guam. I was born and raised here. Um, went to high school here, uh, went to graduated from Father Vegas. Um, then after that, went to the University of Guam, got my bachelor's degree in political science. Um, and then after that, went into teaching for a few years. Um, I taught at FD for a while, um, and I also taught at San Vicente uh, for a few years. Um, and yeah, I had a bunch of different jobs in between that too. Um, but really, I think most of it was, I wasn't really, I don't want to say I wasn't happy, but I, I just, I hadn't found what I really wanted to do yet. Um, so, so when I had the opportunity to try out blacksmithing, uh, I kind of jumped at it because it was something new, something that you know, I had really hadn't heard about before. Um, so it appealed to me and then I started it as kind of as a hobby. And then from there, you know, it just kept going and I realized that, you know, this is really fun, I'm actually kind of good at it, so I just kept pursuing and, you know, kept, um, you know, going to the shop every week, um, learning all I could from the master, and essentially that's, I guess that's what led me here. All right, right on. So, um, in your story, like, so you jumped around, you were a teacher, and then you came to the master thing. In between those phases, what, what struggles did you have? Sure. Um, I, mean, I haven't really had too much struggles. Uh, I mean, most of it's probably the same kind of stuff that most people face. You know, um, you know, you're, you grow up, you try to you try to get a good job, you try to you know you try to make that money, but then you have, you have to have that balance between you know making money to survive and then you know doing stuff that you love. So, I don't know. Okay, so. Being in this workshop, so you talked about the master. Um, so I want, to want you to share about your mentorship from him and any other mentors that you might have had along the way. Okay. Um, well, the master, uh, Frank Lozama, he's been he's been a great influence. He's uh, not only for my, to myself, but uh, to all the other blacksmiths that uh, that have been learning from him. And uh, the way he taught us was essentially he wanted us to make mistakes. He wanted us to try things out, uh, you know, discover how to make things on our own. So it was a it was a very hands-on apprenticeship. It wasn't um, it was less of a teaching experience where someone shows you how to do something and then you try to mimic it. It's more of he'll, he'll describe what you need to do, and then it's up to you to figure out the steps to make that happen. Wow. Um, so that's very hands-on. Were, were there any like lessons in between that you really shared or that you still teaches now that you still carry? Oh. Oh, absolutely. Um, even today, like you know, whenever I finish a project, I'll go show it to him, um, and he'll he'll have pointers for me, things I can improve. Uh, you know, what's wrong with the project? Um, of course, after four years of doing this, you know, the, those comments become fewer and fewer. Uh, but even still, you know, he has he has what maybe like forty years of experience in blacksmithing. Um, there's he's probably forgotten more things than I've ever learned. So. Advice, man. Is there any advice that you might want to give to someone that might want to take up any like craftsmanship style or to be a blacksmith? Is there anything that you might like give as nuggets of advice? Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, whether it's blacksmithing or any other type of craft, um, the most important thing is to, to stick to it, to be dedicated. Um, especially if it's something that you're first starting out with, um, a lot of your projects are going to look horrible. Um, they're going to be these. They're going to be these, you know, ugly things. But then those are important because you see where you came from. Um, so you know, don't throw those away. You know, keep hold on to those um, because you know years down the line you're going to look back at like you know the first knife you made or 
the first whatever you made and then look at the, the latest one you made and see that comparison, you see that huge progress that, you know, and it's, you know, it's super visible when you, when you compare them. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's the most important thing. My first knives, my first machetes, they were ugly. At this point, I'm like, I can't even believe people paid for them. Uh, and I, I kind of wish that I could be like, can I have those back? I'll give you a new one. These look better. But, you know, that's part of the progress. So, being where you're at now, and this is a craft that could, I'm going to say, is kind of endangered at the moment. So we don't know what's going to be going on with the craft after you. Um, so let's project a little bit. What, what do you think 10 years down the line blacksmithing might look for on Guam, or at least for you, what do you see yourself in 10 years? Um, well, I hope to continue this for as long as I can. As long as I'm physically able to, um, I'm going to keep, you know, I'm going to keep forging. Um, so 10 years down the line, I don't know, hopefully, we, uh, hopefully there'll be more blacksmiths on it. Uh, you know, one of the things we started doing here at the shop is offering basic forging classes. Um, so people can come in uh, a couple week, uh, two or three weekends a, a month and, you know, learn all the basics. And those basics will set you up for everything else you need to learn about it, that you can learn on your own. It's all the skills you need to make all the tools that we currently make. Uh, so yeah, so hopefully, you know, I think so far we've taught maybe a couple dozen um, students. Um, and some of them, you know, a lot of them have been military, so a lot of them, after learning, you know, they PCS, they're, they move off island. Um, but no, we actually we actually do have a bunch of uh, locals who are taking it too, and we have, right now, I think we have maybe four or five uh, dedicated apprentices. Right on. So guys, if you want to be a blacksmith apprentice, we are tucked away in the Chamorro Village right now. I'll put in a link and also a location of the workshop. Come check it out. It's a cool place. Thanks again for tuning in to Mentor Asia Pacific. And we'll get right to work. Thanks, James. Thank you. Thanks guys for tuning in to Mentor Asia Pacific. Once again, I'm Alvin Sanga. Check out all our social media that's going to be linked down below. Stay tuned, more mentors are going to come. Uh, we're going to be releasing a mentor every week. And please, please leave a comment down below for any mentors that you'd like to be featured on the channel. Any business professional, entrepreneur, or anybody that you believe is inspiring and can provide to be a mentor for the youth of Guam. Well. Till next time, thank you very much. Sanga out.